So our next uh, guest calls himself a photographer and a retouch artist. I describe him as a genetic mix of Dolly and Escher. He makes the impossible seem perfectly normal, and he takes imagination to a whole new level. Please welcome Eric Johansson. I've always had two big interests, computers and drawing. 13 years ago, I got my first digital camera, and that's when I discovered that I could actually combine those interests, and I discovered photo manipulations. I wanted to try to capture something that wasn't there, but I also wanted it to look like it could have been captured through a camera, like it looked like a photograph. So, the camera became the tool for me to collect material, and I learned by trying. I got more structured over time, and today the process consists of three different steps. It always starts with planning, coming up with ideas, trying to figure out how to capture something. It's about finding locations, and doing sketches, and it's about thinking. The second step is about collecting material, taking photos, and always new photos for every new project. The third step is about putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And this is, of course, the work in Photoshop. But today, I would like to talk a bit more about the first step of the creative process, because I think that's by far the most interesting step, the most important step and the most creative step. Of course, I could never create these images without Photoshop or without a camera, but it always starts with what you can imagine. Imagination is something that's unique to you. That's what makes us different. I don't believe that we're limited by the tools, and I think that what you can imagine is what you can create. Imagination is closely related to inspiration, which is about putting yourself in a situation that makes you want to create something. And to me, that is about trying to see the world differently. Not trying to see the things that are there, but rather, not try to see the things that are not there, but rather try to see the things in my daily life and how they can be combined into something new and something different. Uh, it's about opening up, questioning logic, and trying to think the opposite. I always ask myself, what if, as a way of coming up with ideas? What if a scissor would cut a house, for example? Um, but um, to me, the message or meaning with a picture is not the most important part. I, I think the picture should speak for itself, and I want to tell a story with my pictures, but that story is not for me to decide. It's not only about the idea, because there's a balance between idea and knowing how to visualize something. And that is not the actual execution, but rather an idea of how you can take something from an abstract thought to something that you can share with others. Um, um, I think <coughs> it's not really about making it look realistic, but rather making it look photorealistic, because a camera has its limitations. It doesn't capture the world as we see it. And sometimes, when you can't find a place, you have to combine photos to create a place, and then it's even more important uh, but you can always break it down, plan it well, and let it take time. Because every problem can be broken down into smaller problems. And I think that's what it's all about. Problem solving. I don't have any formal training in either photography or Photoshop, but 
I did study computer engineering for five years, and that's the way I want to approach photography, like an engineer with visual problem solving. Um, because I'm sorry to say, but Photoshop isn't magic. It's, or at least not yet, but uh, it's all about the material you have to work with. And the material, getting good material, is all about planning. Um, although I spend a lot of my time in Photoshop, I always try to capture as much as possible in camera. Because usually you can save a lot of time in the end. But also, because no one can tell you that it doesn't look realistic if you actually captured it for real. Of course, you can't capture something like this uh, just shooting it, but you can always break it down. You can always build miniatures. You can build models. You can use material that has a similar texture to what you want to create. And today, I would like to show you some examples of my own. Take some of these images apart and show you the Photoshop files. And this is not to show you the techniques or tools I use to create something but rather to show you the simplicity of the single elements that make up one of these images. Um, so let's start off with this one. <coughs> this is a qu uh, quite typical Swedish landscape uh, with an island in the middle. Uh, you have shores, you have a house on the island and a lake. But the lower part of the image, you see a fish. And the back of the fish, there's an island. Um, the challenge here was basically to find all the different components I needed to create this image. And it's about 40 layers in total. And let me just take you through this. OK, let's see. Um, I just began with the sky on a clear horizon, just to have something to start with. I put a solid layer on top of it as a base for the water. I photographed mountains that I could put in there, uh, what I imagined it to look like on the water. It was basically just photographed in a stone pit. I put shores on top. I photographed a fish on a fishing trip. <laughs> so it could have been a different fish. I don't know. But this seemed to be a good, good one. Yeah. So I, I masked it out. and. Uh, I, it looked a bit flat, so I made the uh, background darker. Uh, shadow from the fish. I had to match the fish to the background, so I had to make, make it darker, match it in color, and piece by piece, just building it up, always trying to ask myself, myself what would this look like if it would have been captured. Put the island on top, uh, a house, and just to make it more stereotypical Swedish, I made it red, of course. <laughs> and yeah, boats and stuff, and just make it slightly warmer. So it's just building it up piece by piece. And the material is quite <laughs> simple. OK, let's do another one. <laughs> yeah, OK, so this image is basically about setting boats free from their paintings. Um, I thought that would be a good idea. Um, the tricky part here was the water coming out of the painting. Because water is tricky. It's transparent, but it also distorts what's behind it. But what I did was to uh, basically I photographed the model at the location with the thing that I built. So this is the problem solving part. So I took a frame. I built a container behind it out of just plastic bags, uh, cardboard, and uh, duct tape. I pl uh, put a flash at an, in the top of the container just to, to act as the sun. And I could fill it up with water and just make the water come out of it. This saved a lot of time. And I could then easily just remove the parts that you can see of the container. I masked the model out. I shot the location on a separate layer just to be able to move the model around if I needed to. <laughs> Always nice. 
always try to work as non-destructive as possible. It's about 120 layers in total, so it's quite heavy. Um, I replaced the picture in the frame. I put a boat in the frame, more boats in the background. And I photographed the boats in the foreground from a bridge to get a higher perspective. So you always have to think about how to put it together. And finally, just some adjustment layers on top of it just to make it all come together. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> OK. We have more. Um, I want to show you some different ways of how I create these images and that it's all about problem solving and really simple means to create these images. This image, I wanted to create a landscape that opens up like paper so and opens up along this dotted line. I thought it would be a good idea. But it's a little bit, this shape is a bit complex. How do you actually create something like this? But the easiest way to do it is to actually try to build a model. So I figured that as I wanted it to look like paper, um, I thought that I could just use a piece of paper and curl it up like this. So what I did was basically just take a photo of a piece of paper with, this, with the same light, with a big light source on top of it, just like a cloudy sky. So I would get the shadows as well. And I got the perspective as well. So it's basically, I just used this as a base for the whole, for the whole image. So I can just, let's see, I've, let me step you through this. <coughs> I began with the sky. Um, put the background in, foreground. This looks a bit weird, but it will be covered up. I put this layer on top of it just to have s something to um, guide me when I was to, to put in the rest of the pieces in there. So what I then did was basically just OK, let's see if we can. Uh, OK. I could then easily just put the, the pictures of the field in there, and I could just transform it, uh, transform it to fit the perspective of the paper and easily just step it up and the shadow on top of it. Um, let me turn this off. OK. and the bike and some adjustment layers, as usual, to get the right contrast and color in there. Um, yeah, that was basically that one, yeah. <laughs> OK, I think we have time for one more. This one is a bit faster, maybe. But I wanted to create, this was the ori original sketch. Maybe not so pretty, but usually it's just to capture the idea. Um, I wanted to create a house, to put a house on a very lonely cliff somewhere. And the tricky part here was to find the right perspective, finding this house, finding this location. What I did was I just looked out my window and saw the perfect house just across the street. <coughs> so it was simple. Um, so this is what I began with. Um, so what I did was just to cut it out, shape it a little bit, so I, I thought it looked good. Um, I put the background in, but to match the perspective here, this is shot from a quite high perspective, I had to draw out perspective lines. And that made it so much simpler. I could just shoot the different parts and put it in according to the perspective. And the things that I couldn't shoot from the right perspective, I could at least shape them in a way so they would fit the perspective. Really simple method, but really useful. Um, yeah, some clouds in the. OK, I don't know if you see this. Make it all come together. So from this to this. So. What I wanted to show with this is that it's not magic. It's just about the material you have to work with. It's just a lot of photographs stacked on top of each other, blended together with layer masks and adjustment tools. Photoshop is about problem solving, or coming up with these ideas that's about problem solving, visual problem solving. 
It's about capturing the imaginable and realizing the impossible. And I think that what you can imagine is what you can create. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. So, you know, you said imagination is yes. something that's unique to you, to all of us. I mean you. Well, you, course. everyone. Um, but, <laughs> but yours seems a little bit more developed than mine, perhaps. Um, <laughs> is it, have, you, have you always had this, or has this been a progression? As you, as you do more of work, do you start to actually see the world differently as you're doing it? I think it's about just trying to see the world differently and just imagining how it could be combined in a way that's a bit unexpected. It's, uh, it's hard to say exactly how these idea, the ideas come to life, but it's usually just trying to think about things in a different way, I think. So you don't have three exercises I could do and start building this stuff. Would be nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thanks Eric. Very much. I really appreciate yeah. it.